when he talks about covetousness, covetousness, it's all about the, uh, what you see. And, and, and here's the great problem with covetousness. It, it's not just about uh, this, this thing of just, just looking and seeing and desiring. The real problem with covetousness is not what you see. The real problem with covetousness is what you don't see. Touch a neighbor says what you don't see that gets you. You ever enter into a deal or sign a contract with something and, and the stuff that trips you up is in the fine print? Because you didn't see it? You didn't realize it that, that when they write the contract, they write the contract in their favor? They don't write the contract to bless you. They write the, the contract to protect themselves and they get you to sign it and to agree with it. And we so desperate to get the money that we just sign and just sign, turning pages, sign. We don't even, we're not even half reading anything. We just sign it. We're just clicking, okay, I agree. And, and, and we haven't even read the fine print. It's not the stuff that you see that gets you. It's the stuff that you don't see that gets you. And the problem with, uh, with envy, envy is a problem of, of not, even though it's, it's entered into by what you see but you're naturalized, but it's a problem of spiritual vision. Because when you have a real problem with covetousness, it's about the stuff that you don't see. See, he'll show you your neighbor's wife or your neighbor's husband, something that you're not supposed to have something that is illegal and immoral or illicit for you to have. He'll show you that, but he won't show you the stuff behind that. And you'll be all in love with somebody, and they're not even all that they're beefed up to be. He'll show you this fine man, but he didn't show you that he was in debt. He didn't show you that the man snores like a freight train. He didn't show you that he had a bad leg and his bones are popping and doing all this kind of stuff. And, he didn't show you that he leaves hair all over the counter and does all of this kind of stuff and won't flush the toilet. I, I mean, he, he didn't show you all of his other habits. He'll show you their car, but he didn't show you the fact that it's leaking oil and it's got engine trouble. He didn't show you the car note. You'll be entering the house, but then he didn't show you the mortgage note that comes along with that and the arguments that ensue as a result of that. He didn't show you that there are rooms in the house that won't get hot enough because the air doesn't circulate in that room or in the summertime, the air condition doesn't work that well in that part of the house or the floor that's creaking over here and the wall that's got a crack here because of a faulty foundation. He didn't show you all of that. He just showed you that house and you say, ooh wee, that's real pretty. He didn't show you a problem with the electrical system. He didn't show you that the plumbing was backed up. He didn't show you the leaky roof in that house. I declare that there are some things that you'll be looking at and lusting over and it's not even all that is cracked up to be. It ain't about who's so fine, it's about who is mine. When you begin to say, God, that one may be fine, but this one is mine. Yeah, that's fine, but that's not mine. This is the one that you blessed me with. This is my good thing. This is my gift. I'm all right with this. I'll admire that, but I'm going to celebrate this. This is what you gave me, God. And it may not be much, but I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I give you the glory. This is all I need. You gave me what I needed for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It may not be as good as that one, but I thank you that this one is all mine. This may not be the best car, but it's paid for. It may leak all, but it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. I got the title. I might pull up and have to keep the foot on the gas and on the brake at the same time, but this one is mine. This is all mine. I'm helping somebody today real practically that thou shall not covet. See no evil, thou shall not covet. Henry George said that man is the only animal who desires increase as they are fed. Whose desires increase. Man is the only animal whose desires increase as they are fed. 
the only animal that's never satisfied. Now, something's wrong with us when you covet and you're never satisfied. You keep just showing you more and more and more. I mean, how much is enough? How many women is enough? How many men is enough? How, how, much, how much dope is enough? How much weed is enough? How many, when are you going to get enough? If we just let you have a party all night long, would you ever get enough? We'd be passed out unconscious somewhere and still didn't get enough because it, it's just until you get another fix. America has created lust in our hearts because really covetousness is about lust and greed. And lust is never satisfied. And greed is never satisfied. You can't ever give greedy people enough money. If they won the biggest lottery, they never would be satisfied because they'd be looking on getting more, more, more. It's never satisfied. What a terrible torment to be working all of your life and you never ever get satisfied. May I remind you of what the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6. It says godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Great gain. Godliness. When I can just live a godly life and learn to be content. Paul said whatever state you find yourself. He said I I have therewith learned to be content. You have to learn contentment to where it's all right if I don't have all of that. It's all right. I'm all right if I don't have all of what everybody else has. I'm, I'm all right. I'm, I'm, I'm at peace in my own soul because, you see, uh, it's about filling this God-shaped void that every man has. There is a God-shaped void in every human being, in every man. There's a, there's a void that is shaped just like God, and if you try to fill it with anything else, it doesn't fit the shape. And so there's a need in us to have this God-shaped void filled in our life, and you, and you need to fill that, that void that is in you with something that is a wonderful, wonderful gift that comes honestly from God. And when you find that from God, you are very easily satisfied when you fall in love with God because love is easily satisfied. Lust is never satisfied. You never get enough when you're lusting and greedy for more. You never are satisfied. But when you become satisfied with yourself and the God who is in you, and you're at peace, then you can have peace with your own soul, and you can have peace with your life and peace with your neighbor and peace with everything that comes into your world because you have found this God. And, and just sometimes being more cautious of what you've got on the inside because covetousness is oftentimes an attempt to amass on the outside the stuff that you are lacking on the inside. It's because of the stuff that I'm missing because I feel so incomplete because somebody raped me and they molested me and they robbed part of my self-esteem and now the only thing that can give me value is if I have a degree in front of my name and the only thing and then you'll find that the degree doesn't quite do it for you and sometimes you think that if I change my marital status that then that will be the key and that's not really the key to it because I know happy single folks and I know happy married folks but I know miserable single folks and I know miserable married folks because you can have for some people that the worst thing that can happen to some people is that they don't get what they, their heart's desire is. And then the worst thing for other people is that they get what they desire. Because I know women who have desired a certain man and they got him and they were miserable. And then other women who were in love with a man that they desired and they didn't get him and they're miserable. And sometimes the worst misery is in what you thought that you want it and you get it or in what you think that you want and you don't get it and both parties are miserable and the real key is that you were trying to amass something on the outside that you didn't have a settlement with on the inside and sometimes if you just get along with God and let him rock you in the cradle of his love and you become okay with who you are and that I'm not looking for somebody else to make me happy and somebody to do it's your joy and contentment comes godliness with contentment is great gain 
Being rich is not determined by how much you have. It is determined by how little you need. I told you that when I was a little boy, one time I was out flying my kite, and I used to fly a kite, and the, the weather would be strong, and it would be blowing, and one time I got it way up. I mean, I had 300 yards of string on there, and my kite was beyond the clouds. I couldn't even see it. And somebody came by, and they, they, they said, uh, what are you doing? I said, I'm flying a kite. They said, how do you know you've got a kite up there? They said, you can't see it. I said, I may not be able to see it, but every now and then I feel its pull. And when you're in relationship with God, there's something, my spirit is connected to something beyond what I can't see. But every now and then, the wind of the spirit will blow and I feel its pull. Every now and then, that thing that you cannot see, but you feel its pull and you realize there is a God. There is a God. I know that there's a God. And I don't need somebody to prove to me and let me see everything when I can feel the pull of him. I feel his pull pulling me to get up and pray. I feel his pull leading me to his word. I feel his pull to his house. I feel his pull to prophesy. I feel his pull. There's a power when, when you can feel something that you can't see. God can use your life to be a blessing in areas just because you feel his pull because God led you by that which you cannot see. And the spirit is so often likened unto the wind and you can't tell where, where it comes from and you can't tell where it's going. That's the nature of the Spirit of God. You didn't see him coming, and you didn't see where he was going. God says, I'm not going to leave any ability to trace myself. It's like water. You can't leave a trail in a water. When you get in the water, it'll close up behind you. You can't even tell which way that the person went. Even if uh, you got a dog who has a keen sense of smell, and they can follow your scent, lead them to the water. And the water will wash the scent away, and they can't find you in the water. They can't smell you in the water. God says, I'm going to erase your, 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 your scent. That's why he said, I will separate your sins as far as the east is from the west. I will cast them into the sea so nobody will be able to trace you down and find the trail of where you have been and the depths of degradation that you have reached because God says, I will wash them in the sea of forgetfulness. I'm going to have mercy on you. And I just want you to know that there are some things that only you and Jesus know about and only you and Jesus have to know about. Somebody ought to lift their hand and say, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Until next time, God bless you.